انا لسه ما ابتديتش وانت نمت اوريدي <تصفيق> انا وانا بقرا الانجيل كان الشمامسه بيعلقوا الكمبيوتر معايا كده شويه فلو الكمبيوتر علق مش انا الشمامسه بيلعبوا بيعملوا شقاوه In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Um, I'm very happy to be here tonight. Um, I would like to thank Abuna Sha and Abuna Yohanna for their invitation for me to come and take the blessings of Saint Mary and uh, their blessings. And um, yani, uh, we uh, usually come every year and yani, take the blessing of Saint Mary. Uh, according to the program, um, God willing, we're going to contemplate on the Ark of Covenant. And uh, in order to speak about the Ark of Covenant, um, first I will start by trying to explain the position of the Ark of Covenant in the tabernacle, where it was, and also understand um, the significance of everything that was built in the ark and its meaning and we'll try to tie that up to the symbolism of St. Mary and see where in the Tazbaha uh, mentioned about the Ark of Covenant. Um, since you know, we talk usually when we talk about some things from the Old Testament there's lots of questions in the middle so I'm gonna be asking some questions in the middle and انا جايب صوره العذراء معايا هنوزعها عليك وابونا هيديها لكم اللي يجاوب سؤال some of the questions will be some easy questions مش هندي له صوره لا هندي لك كل ما فيش حاجه um, so i'm going to ask some questions if i ask the question in english so some of the youth should answer the question if i ask the question in arabic and english uh, anyone can answer um, okay بس عشان نبقى متفقين من الاول بس أنا بس مش عاوز تنام أنا عارف النهاردة يعني it's a working day so most of you يعني just came from work ربنا يكون معاكم يعني to choose a sign of commitment and uh, dedication and love for St. Mary and the church يعني إن أنتوا you had a long day of work and you still uh, يعني had the time to come to the church and take the blessings of St. Mary's revival يعني ربنا يعوضكم أنا مش هطول عليكم so when we start talking about the position of the ark um, and the purpose of it. So I'm just taking a step back before we start talking about the ark, so we can be all in the picture. Yani. Yani I'm sorry I have a long, little bit of a long introduction, but yani, so we can get the understanding um, of the significance of the ark of covenant in the, in the tabernacle. This is the tabernacle, as it was ordered by God and, and how Moses built it. Um, we'll see another view of it. This is how we enter, this is the gate of it, and then the first thing you see is the bronze altar, and offering altars, and then the bronze lever, and then you go at the entrance, and you go the holy place, and after the holy place there is a veil, and then the Ark of Covenants in the Holy of the Holies. This is just a layout of the design of the... Thank you. Okay, so we go here, this is the court area, so they come from here, and then we have, this is the entrance, this is the, what we call it, the holy place, and then we go here, this is the holy of holies, and this is the Ark of Covenant in here, this is a layout. And there's also another image, this is a side view of it, so when we come, we come from here, and here is the Ark of Covenant that, yani, with the grace of God, we're going to contemplate on. So this is the where the Ark of Covenant was in the in tabernacle, just to get a, a view with the position of it or the place of it in the tabernacle. So the tabernacle, uh, again, so the Ark of Covenant. Now when we start t thinking about the um, tabernacle was um, was the place for God to meet with his people. God used to meet and they used to offering in the tabernacle. So it's a symbol of the, the church, yani, where God meets with people. If we go to the Ark of Covenant was in the Holy uh, of Holies, the holiest place in the tabernacle. As it is mentioned in the book of Exodus 25, it says, and they shall make, make an ark of, 
um, acacia wood, two and a half cubits shall be in its length, a cubit and a half with its width, and a cubit and a half its height. So this is the measures of it. And shall overlay it with pure gold inside and out. You shall overlay it and shall make on it a molding of gold all around. You shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them in its four corners. Two rings shall be on one side and two rings on the other side. And you shall make holes of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark, that the ark may be carried by them. The poles shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it, and you shall not put into the ark the testimony which will give you. So this is taken again from the book of Exodus 25. This is a description of what God told Moses how the Ark of Covenant should look like. And when we see, yeah, and this is a, a clear image of the Ark of Covenant. As you can see, here is the, the poles that we're talking about, the rings, four rings on every side, and two poles to carry it and walk with it. And it was overlaid with gold, and it has the cover, which is the mercy seat, and the two uh, cherubims covering the Ark. And when we think about what was the purpose of the Ark of Covenant, this is the first question. What was the purpose of the Ark of Covenant? Why did God ask Moses to do it, to build it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> To what? Protect the Ten Commandments. Okay. لا إحنا نسأل بالعربي طب إيه الهدف من تبوت العهد ليه ربنا قال لهم يعملوه أصلاً الغرض منه إيه؟ حاجة من الاثنين لما نايمين لما نايمين لا هي السكرين شغاله كويس مفيش حاجه احنا هنا بس اي حد يقول حاجه لمس حضور الله موجود معاه وكانوا بيعملوا بايه كمان كان في تابوت العهد حفظوا فيه العصا هارون وحفظوا فيه لوحي الشريعه وحفظوا فيه بعض الوصايا يس أول حاجة when we think we go back to the the scripture and uh, the material that was made of acacia wood. Why was it this type of wood? God didn't choose something randomly. Um, yes, and it's uh, a type of wood that it's um, was acacia again. So we, we, when we يعني, to summarize what we said, and how the ark was made of acacia wood and overlaid with gold on every side, and also it has the four rings as we said and the two poles on it, and to carry it, okay. And also the everything was made from the acacia wood, and the mercy seat was the cover. So this is يعني كده the description of it. God's purpose was in how, as we said, in how it, it reveals His presence in the midst of it, midst of the, His people. And also, they used to, when they offered the sacrifices, the priests used to take the sacrifices and go to the holies of holies and sprinkle it on the cover, the mercy seat, on the, on the cover of the, uh, the, taber, the Ark of the Covenant as a sign of reconciliation and forgiveness of sins. After they say their sins, the priest used to sprinkle it with the, um, the blood of the sacrifices. So this is how yani, God, the purpose of God, to show his presence and also so when the priest goes and sprinkle the uh, blood of the sacrifices on it. And it was only for the priest that allowed uh, the high priest 
not just a priest, to go there. And how many times a year? When? Imta. Marra wahda fi sana sah. Imta. Kan aid. Missama malish. Had Allah sah? كان بيدخل في عيد الكفاره بيدخلوا اوتوميشنز فيست بيدخل بيحط الساكرفايس ذا بلاد اوف ساكرفايس سبرينكلز اون ات واي واز ات ميد فروم اكيشا وود واي ذس سيرتن تايب اوف وود ذس تايب اوف وود واز نون از ذا تايب اوف وود ذات نيفر روتنز خشب لا يسوس اسمه خشب الصنط بالعربي خشب لا يسوس لي برضو النوع دوت why this especially kind of wood what was it symbolizing ها بطلية العذراء الدائمة كويس وي كمان خلي بالك كل حاجة ان ارك is a symbol for St. Mary and also Christ is that was the purpose of it خشب لا يسوس Um, not rotten wood was a symbol of what? Christ is they. Christ is they. Then huh. Christ was without sin, the only one without sin. And also uh, the sameness nature of Christ, he was without sin. خشب لا يسوس المسيح النوع الخشب الوحيد اللي ما يسوش هو دوت فكان رمز المسيح الذي بلا خطية بلا خطية and also زي ما انتو قلتو كان uh, symbol of St. Mary the purity of St. Mary that he uh, uh, St. Mary was out any edifile in her so this is the first part which is the material was man made of so acacia wood and the second part in verse 11 it says and you shall overlay it with pure gold inside and out You shall overlay it and shall make on it a molding of gold all around. Why is that and what does it mean? Huh. Purity. Yes, gold is purity. Okay. What is the, the gold in the Bible resembles purity? Okay. Okay, so it was overlaid with gold. Gold always represents the diary of Christ and divine, divine nature. And خلي بالك إنه what was made, the uh, ark was made of sheet and wood, and this is very important. It was made of wood, overlaid with gold, pure gold, and gold resembles the nature of Christ, the purity of Christ, as if it's saying the two nature of Christ, the wood, the human nature, which because wood comes out of the earth, right? شجرة بتطلع أي نوع من أنواع الشجرة من الأرض. But this is the nature that Christ take from, took from St. Mary, the, our nature. And the gold is the symbol of divinity of Christ. So this is the Ark of Covenant. Wood overlaid with gold. Two natures together. This is the humanity of Christ. When Christ was incarnated, the incarnation of Christ, the nature of Christ. And also gold that represents purity as St. Mary. Purity of St. Mary which resembled with gold. Gold is pure. And St. Mary was pure, her soul and her body. So this is, it was overlaid with gold from every side. Okay, then what? Verse 12 tells us, you shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them in its four corners. Two rings shall be on one side and two rings on the other side. Okay, so the other thing is four rings. على السايد ليه؟ Again the four golden rings placed on each side, each corner resembles what? Four corners of the earth. Very good. It's in, in Acts 1.8 it says symbolizing the creation of the world. 
and also the four Gospels all around. And, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to all the end of the world. So usually the four corners and the four rings represents the uh, Christ for the whole creation. Christ came not for only certain people, for all the creation. This is the four rings. And then we'll go to verse 13. It says, you shall make a pole of acacia wood and overlaying them with gold. You shall put them, the poles, into the rings on the sides of the ark, that the ark may be carried by them. The poles shall be in the rings of the ark, and they shall not be taken from it. What does it mean? So you're creating, you, you said in the, in the ark of covenant, four rings get on that side. And you get two poles, Behush from the rings, get go inside the rings, so they can use them to carry the Ark of Covenant, the priest to carry the Ark of Covenant, without touching it, right? If you remember, and the priest used to carry it without touching the Ark of Covenant. And once they put the poles, they never take it out. Very important. Why is that? What exactly is staying here? What is it symbolizing? Okay, so the two poles, again, we talked about it, to carry them, and never be removed. Very important. Okay. Again, it represents the two nature of Christ together. The gold only represents the divinity of Christ, and the wood represents his human nature, the wood out of the earth. So they both together. And once they put them, then we've been with this, and never remove, never separate it nor a twinkle of an eye, never got separated. His divinity never parted not from his humanity. They're together, never separated. Once they put the poles inside the Ark of Covenant, they never removed it again. So the two nature never been separated together. So this is basically what the Ark and what God told them to do and the symbolism behind uh, what the God asked them to do. Of course, again, the Ark of Covenant is a symbol of St. Mary. And what was inside the Ark? Three things. Three things. Tablets and the Aaron's rod and then the pot of men. The first one was the pot of men. Okay. The Rabbana asked them to put the pot of men in there why God wanted them to have it in there, in sight. Okay. Yes. I shall to remind them with the days and he supported them and provided for them while they were in the wilderness, the 40 days in the wilderness. Okay. And the men that represent us what? Christ. He's the bread of life. That's in... in uh, In the book of St. John 6, 5, it says, This is the bread of life which came down from heaven, that as your father ate the men and were dead, he who eats the bread will live forever. So the man was a symbol of the Christ. And this is what we received, the Holy Communion that we received uh, in the liturgy. So this is the bread of life. So the man was a symbol of it. And also, the part of man was a symbol of St. Mary, right? Because the manna was Christ, and he was inside the pot of manna. So the golden pot of manna, that what was a symbol of St. Mary carrying the Lord of Christ in, inside of her, in her womb. So the first thing that was inside the ark was the pot of manna, the golden pot of manna. The second thing was Aaron's rod, Shmana Aaron's rod. Why did God ask them to put Aaron's rod inside the manna, the uh, ark of covenant? Yeah, my good of the book of Numbers 17. Hmm. Very important. Was a symbol of what? Okay. Why is a symbol of Saint Mary? Okay. Was it a symbol of Christ also? يعني we are أنا عارف نحن في نهضة العذراء ما في بنتكلم العذراء بس لازم نربط الاثنين ببعض يبقى واضحين. Uh, Aaron's rod 
it's a piece of wood. At that piece of wood, the budded sprang, يعني إيه طلعت بقت حية تاني. رمز للمسيح اللي كان في القبر وقام حياة قام من الموت شيء كان ميت وبقى حياة. And also was Aaron's rod, uh, Aaron uh, the high priest, and Christ is the high priest. So uh, it was a symbol of Saint Mary and symbol of Christ because it was a dead piece of wood and became alive that sprang up. So that's uh, it. And also, tarfin why the story of the iron rod got me in the story of the iron rod. Why did the story of the iron rod get me in the story of the iron rod? Can any one of the youth remember what happened to that uh, rod of Aaron? Why did it sprang or bud it? What happened? When was that? Do you remember the story of it? Anyone? كان في تمرد من جماعة من بعض الأفراد الآخرين تمرد إن يعني إيش معنى موسى وهارون والكلام زي كده فمع التمرد الله أظهر إن عصا هارون هي اللي أفرغت بدليل إن ده اختيار الله. Right. Yes. Yes. هو what happened is إن هما كان في dispute between all the tribes of Israel. I can understand how many tribes one of the youth. Twelve tribes, good. So they got together, they brought a rod from everyone. Everyone brought a rod. So we had twelve rods representing the twelve tribes. Okay? And they put them together. And in the morning, only the rod of Aaron was budded. So that was a sign to God that he should be the high priest. Okay, so that, the second thing that was in the ark. So we had the first one was the uh, pot of manna, and then we had the ark. The second was the tablets. The Ten Commandments, and this was the uh, the Word of God, is the symbol of Christ. It's the Word was incarnate, and also, um, so we had the three things in the Ark. We had the Aaron's rod and the pot of manna, golden pot of manna, and the two tablets of the covenant in there. And also, yeah, and when we think about why did God ask them to put, to put the two tablets inside of the ark, not just because it's the God's written commandments on it, it's also to remind them. Um, yeah, and I think in here also, yeah, and God asked them to put it because you remember the first time Moses got the two tablets came down from the uh, mountain and he found them building a. a um, a golden yeah, statue and they started worshiping it. So he broke it. So the first and one of the, especially one of the Ten Commandments, and thou shalt not make an image and worship it. So he broke it as, يعني كده بعد ما قصرت ربنا الدهر الثاني بس as I think in Hawa also God wanted them to have the two tablets in there because it's his word and also so they can remember the rebellious sometimes against his commandments and this is يعني, I think it's a, يعني, for us to remember how many times we broke many of the commandments of God in the Bible, in the New Testament. God gave us his word and we ignore it and leave it on the side and do our own way. And we break the commandments like um, those people of Israel, sometimes they're rebellious against uh, the commandments of God. Okay, let's go on. So we talked about the ark as itself, the material it was made of, and how it was built, and the purpose of every part of it. And we talked about what's inside the ark. Let's go on in the same chapter. Then he started talking about, you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. ark. Um, two and a half cubits shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubim of gold. Of hammered work you shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end, one on each side. You shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it, of one piece with the mercy seat. 
and the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and the ark shall be put the testimony that I will give you, and there will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherub, which are on the ark of the testimony, about everything which I will give you in commandments to the children of Israel. The ark had a cover, which is called the mercy seat. Do you know why we call it the mercy seat? Why is it called the mercy seat? Adam and Shabab, any one of the youth, do you know why? Why is it called the mercy seat? How can we say mercy seat? Okay. This is how it looked like. The cover for the ark. Again, the ark was in the, um, the holies of holies. We call it the mercy seat or atonement cover. Um, and it was made of pure gold, so it was made of uh, wood and covered with pure gold, and the two cherubim in its end. And um, it was placed on the top of the ark. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the blood of the sacrifices was sprinkled on the top of that cover. So that's why we they call it the mercy seat. It's the throne of God. It's on the top. And this is where how people used to receive their forgiveness of sins. They put their hands on a sacrifice outside an altar and the priest standing there and after they confess their sins, the priest kills the sacrifice and takes some of the blood and sprinkles it on uh, the uh, Ark of Covenant on the top of it, in the mercy seat. And this is how we received the reconciliations, reconciliation with God that happened in the Old Testament. And it wasn't just to, to cover and protect what's inside the ark, although it was important, and that's why we resemble St. Mary of the mercy seat or the cover, atonement cover, because it protected the two tablets which resemble in Christ. Christ was inside of her. And she, and as the church fathers call her, the protective of the uh, mystery of incarnation of the Lord. She carried him and she protected him while he was uh, still young, a baby. And there was two cherubims in there on each end on the cover or the mercy seat. Saint Mary was above the cherubim and the seraphim and we, she was worshipped by them. So this is basically the mercy seat that was covered. So we talked about the Ark of Covenant and its symbolism and what it was made of and description of it. And also talked about the mercy seat and the cover of the Ark of Covenant. St. Mary and the, the Ark of Covenant in the Tasbihah. If you remember in the Sunday to Otukiya, we tell her, eh, um, they called you Mary, the daughter of Joachim, the true tabernacle of the Lord. So this is a symbol. You find the explanation of what we talked about, the whole tabernacle and the Ark of Covenant. And also, they linking the Ark, Ark of Covenant, to the Virgin, St. Mary. And it's a chosen gold to her purity, exactly what we talked about. So the church put it for us in the decay. Also, you found they likened the, the mercy seat that we talked about to the virgin and the cherubim of glory overshadowing her, explaining the mercy seat and the symbolism to Saint Mary. So the church is linking all together. They likened the golden pot that we talked that had the manna to the virgin and the measure of the manna to our Savior. The manna was our Savior. They likened the golden candlestand, the Hagatanya Fulchim. But these are the three verses that also, there are some more that talks and explain the meaning of the Ark of Covenant. This is how beautiful our tasbih is and our hymns in the church. It has explanation that we can uh, learn from and start memorizing um, so we can learn the symbolism of the uh, Ark of Covenant in the uh, tasbih. 
Um, and glory be to God forever. I mean, if anyone have any question, anything, and you can ask Abuna, not me. <laughs> okay. A few uh, question for Abuna, not me. <laughs> Why did they call it the mercy seat? Was somebody sitting on the seat? Oh, um, um, I think in the uh, mercy seat, because this is the, considered the throne of God, God sits on a throne. And uh, again, as yani, a symbol of Christ, because in how uh, God and the forgiveness of sins can through him, through the blood of Christ, and he sits there in the throne of the seat. I think what it is. Abuna lo ando talib kani. And mercy because the forgiveness of sins happens there. And seat or a throne, yani, for God, He was there. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. أنا فاكر في بعد إذن الله تسابونا في ترنيمة كنا بنقولها في كده The usually the symbol is of St. Mary So I brought the parts that talks about الجزء اللي بيكلم عن تابوت العهد فيها ترنيمة اسمها بتاعت زي النار ما في العليقة ترنيمة الترنيمة القديمة بتشرح كل اللي احنا كلنا عشان نحفظها مع بعض وتثبت في دماغنا يعني أبائنا حتى الصغيرين كانوا بيعلمونا الحفظ عن طريق الترانيم والآيات بتسهل واحد يحفظ المعاني كويس زي ما قلنا الكنيسة برضه في تسبحة بتاعتها تحط لنا المعاني ليه في نغمة على أساس أنها تبقى سهلة الحفظ والحاجات دي تبقى مغروسة في أسهن فترنيم أنا بتهيألي أنكم كلكم عارفينها يعني ممكن نبتدي نقولها مع بعض إيه بعد إذن تبون تابوت العهد خشب من الصنت أساسه متين وإلى يتلوسوس زي العذر نقية رجسد منها الله قدوس تابوت العهد خشب من الصنت أساسه متين زي العذر نقية وطارت جسد من الله قدوس زي تابوت العهد صفى جوا وبر ذهب ملموس رمز ناوي نظر الله ولكل نفوس نظر الله ولكل نفوس زي عصايا معك يا هارون نبت الزرع وفي طرحت من غير زرع الناس ميزلها العذر ديوم لا زي عصايا معك يا هارون نبت الزرع وفي طرحت من غير زرع الناس مثالها العذر ديوم الله زي العذر بتول على طول حمل الكلمة وهو الله أعظم ما يوجر حمل رب المامن على السماء رب الوكيل على السماء كان طوين للعدم حمل قلم الله وين زي العدر ما حملت يوم الله الكلمة 
زن کنو لو حند لاد و حمل و کلم الله زمن زیل در محملت یوم الله وصفا بقي دخل المن وكان له مكان رب المجد ده شاب نفسه خبز حياة من كمان خبز حياة كمان كان في تابوت العهد الخير استلمنا وبارا ويا الوحيد العهد كمان عصا لها رندي جمان ويا كان في تابوت العهد يرست المن وبارك معاه ويا لوحين كمان عصا لهارندي كمان ويا كل دواس في الأم النور حمل الرب نعيم وحياة زي المن وزي السلوى وزي الحن كلام الله وزي الوحي لكلام الله ولله الله هنا كل مجد وكرامة من الآن الأبد Thank you Abuna Samuel على موضوع الشيق الجميل ده um, We need to hear more and more about the, the, the symbols in the Old Testament The Old Testament is full of many things Not only prophecies, not only teachings, but many symbols There is persons are symbols and parts of the buildings are symbols also. And also many events in the, in the Old Testament are symbols and shadows of the New Testament. All things are fulfilled in the New Testament. So we, we, we need to hear more and more and learn more and more. Thank you, Abuna, for this nice lecture and, and sermon. Uh, tomorrow we will have Dr. Atif Ma'awad with us, he will uh, he will speak with us about the the letter of Jacob. So it is also a very good and uh, nice uh, topic to hear about. Um, and you know, it is synchronized my uh, with the with the Saturday Theotokia. Tomorrow will be Saturday, and in the Saturday Theotokia we have this symbol, the letter of Jacob. Uh, and there is a special hymn, very, very beautiful hymn about the letter of Jacob as a symbol of Saint Mary. Lahn Aretin Thonti, the Mogut Fes Otokit Sept. Bukran, inshallah, Nehder Mahabad al Ashaya, Zay Kulium, and Campbell Mahabad, Heba Mana Doctorat. نصلي علشان أبونا سحاء يعني هو كان مر يومين كده صعبين الأسبوع ده لكن بقى كويس خالص وتحسن هو يعني كان في المستشفى وبعدين هيتنقل لمكان ريهابليتيشن يبقى يستعيد فيها صحته تاني إن شاء الله فاحنا كلنا بنصلي له ونطلب كده من الست العذراء تتمجد معاه في الأيام الجميلة دي ويقوم لنا بالسلامة ويرجع لكنيسته تفضلوا نصلي 
Amin alleluia, nuxa patrike, yoke, agiobne, vumati, Zmonia irintet fe nemni moe me fioru nemni siti nemni simmare pe knai nem te kirini o yen softem pe kle o sotiem mono nainan kiriele son kiriele kirielogi sonamin es moe ro es moe ro es time tania koni e volgo empi Christos Benoti Amen is a show peace. Christ our God, I can give peace, grant us your peace, establish us your peace, and forgive us our sins for yours, the power, the glory, the blessing, and the might forever and ever. Amen. Make so it way thee to save us all things, given our Father who art in heaven. In heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. And now, love God, the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the gift and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit.